All right, new video today on lift suspension. So after we did, in the summer, we did a lowering suspension uh, video on coilovers and lowering springs. Uh, people asked us quite a lot about doing a lift suspension video and being as the weather's got bad and um, lift suspension swampers seem to always be more popular over the winter, we thought it would be the ideal time to do it. So we've got a couple of vehicles here to show you. Uh, there's our solo docker that you will probably all know. That's on the uh, big H or B-I-G-H lift suspension and then this vehicle is one that we're going to lift now on one of these kits but I'll just run you through the various options so a few years ago there was only really one or two options for lift suspension but as the swamper look has become more and more popular the options for suspension has also increased and there's loads of options now whether you just want to lift it a little bit whether you just want to lift the rear or whether you want to go full blown off-road there's something for everybody now and various different budgets which we'll explain as we go along the way so first of all various different spring options and different damper options so we'll start at the cheapest and the basic end of the scale so you might be looking just to lift the rear of your vehicle we've done a video on this previously actually but if you've got a camper and it's sitting lower at the back which is quite common or you sit uh, have a load of weight in the back you can replace your rear springs with these iBack balancing springs they're just a d direct replacement for your standard rear springs you still use your existing front springs um, you use these these come with them they sit on the top they're the top spring rubber that comes as a set just to lift your rear end. Up from there, you've got a full set of IBAC 35mm lift springs. So this set here is front and rear springs. You can work with your standard OEM dampers if you like, or we'll go on to your different damper options in a moment. That will lift your vehicle about 35mm. That's what we're going to fit to this vehicle here. So this doesn't have a, a lot of weight in the back really. It's going to have dog cages and stuff in the back. So the standard 35mm lift on their own will be absolutely fine. Um, you use your standard lower spring rubbers, it comes with replacement upper spring rubbers um, and that will give you about a 35mm lift all round depending on the weight of your vehicle. So from there, similarly, you go up to the adjustable kit. So again, 35mm IBAC lift uh, kit, but this is an adjustable kit. So more popular if you're going to be carrying a lot of weight or if you've got a full camper because the vehicle will sit lower at the back um, with just a spring set these this is a t6.1 version so you'll see it has this black plastic ring so if you're just replacing the springs they are specific to t6 to t6.1 these are t6 t5 t6 they have no lower uh, spring seat whereas these have these on so that's the t6.1 set so this is the adjustable set as i mentioned previously so this adjuster sits on the top it also for tuv approval in germany comes with this which is a um, bump stop extender you fit the front springs, that determines how high the vehicle is going to be, and then you fit the rear springs and use the adjusters to adjust the back up to match the height of the front. So moving on from there is the extreme lift. So the biggest and the highest lift you can get without causing any issues or concerns with uh, drive shafts and distance stuff is the big H kit. So this is a product that we developed with Bill Stein. Kind of came off the back of our low suspension off the solo kit, um, and the name B B I G. H actually stands for because I got high so we were known for doing low suspension here and we decided to work with Bill Stein to make a lift suspension and that's where the because I got high kit came from so these will give you a 45 millimeter lift ish all round uh, vehicle dependent uh, that's what's on the swan pass so I'll get in a bit closer and show you that soon so yeah 45 mil lift it can work with your standard dampers but really you are at the absolute limits the thing to bear in mind if you're lifting your vehicle with standard length shocks if you are actually going off road or going down potholes or off, off um, speed bumps you could potentially top out um, and th but that's where you would go for an extended damper so it can be used with oem dampers in an ideal world if you're going to be using it off road or going across fields or campsites you it is worth extending your dampers as you go there's a reason why you don't lift more than 45 mil on left way so when you're lifting up on the front mainly the lower wishbone gets to such an angle it starts bottom, bottoming out on the subframe itself so a lot of people like Andy said uh, you drive chassis limit some people say you can space them and stuff like that but your wishbone is actually holding you from going any higher because it bottoms out on the subframe itself. So as we said, when lifting, if you just go for looks and you want to keep your budget low, then standard 35mm IBAC lift spring is fine uh, with your OEM damper, but you do have potential that if you are actually going off-road, the damper could top out. Um, and that's where the longer dampers come in. And you can also use improved dampers to improve your ride quality. So here's an example of three different types of dampers. So I'll just run you through them. These here are all actually for T30, but these two come in the T32 at the moment and this one doesn't, but will be hopefully in the new year. So 
You have built on Germany products. We bring these in direct from Germany. This is an extended B6 damper with different internals. So if you've seen our video on B14 Comforts, same principle internally. A B6 damper, it's slightly longer than an OEM damper, but not massively. Um, but this gives you um, the better compression. So better inbound and rebound and slightly better body roll. Uh, and that's an extended uh, comfort damper with a K, uh, extended B6 damper that's available on our website. So a nice way to improve your ride if you're not going particularly high, if you're going 35 mil, uh, but you want to also improve your dampening, that's the kit that will do that job. From there, you've got our big H damper. So that's the longest damper in the range. All these springs will work with all these dampers. They all seat the same. Um, but if you're going for the extreme end of lift, this is the longest damper on the market. Uh, extended B6 damper again, but extended even more. Works brilliantly with all of the kits, but really popular when going with the extreme lift of the big H kit. And then the new kit on the block. This is the first time we've really shown these, and that's what's going on this kit here. The owner of this vehicle really wanted to go for comfort, didn't want massive amounts of lift, but wanted to, uh, he carries dogs and dog cages and stuff in the back, so wanted it to be comfortable for them. And these are adjustable dampener from Coney, so we'll show you how, but you can adjust the damper uh, at the top there, uh, and uh, you can adjust the dampening rate to make it softer or harder, but generally uh, in this particular application, we'll go for the softest one. Extended again, so this kind of sits in between the, the green uh, comfort and the solo damper this sits mid-range on the height they're all slightly longer and um, we'll put the dimensions of how much longer they are at the bottom of the screen or at the end just to show you uh, how much longer these are than a standard OEM damper um, just to give you a bit, a bit more information so as I said before this is our solo swamper so this has actually got yellow dampers on so don't be confused by that if you look in there filthy dirty uh, they're yellow because they're original prototypes, but that's lifted about 45 mil. Hard to get a good gauge really of how it looks because it's one of a kind. You can't really compare that to anything else that's out there. And then this vehicle's currently on stock suspension, but this will be having the combination of the Coney adjustable dampening dampers and also the 35 mil spring set. So these uh, popular wheel choice, the KMC Hole Shots. Uh, Matt Brooks at uh, T5 Upgrades is your man for these. It's probably the most common wheel that you see uh, on Swampers at the moment. Although, again, the whole off road wheel range is changing. No end, there's loads of new wheels coming out. We don't have some new wheels coming. Matt over uh, in Wales at T5 Upgrades is a, a real knowledge on the whole lift stuff, so he's also a really handy guy to know if you've got any questions. The one thing to bear in mind when you're lifting a vehicle normally, if you're lifting, you go for an off road wheel. So bigger wheels and tyres, so these are 17s with a 245, what are we? 245, 65, 17. It does throw your speedo out by sort of four or 5%. So if you've got access to VADCOM, um, or anybody who knows what they're doing with VADCOM, can actually recalibrate your speedo to uh, adjust it so it's right. Otherwise you're gonna be driving down the motorway um, and thinking you're doing 70, but actually you're doing 75. But you can calibrate that back so it's a lot more accurate. But definitely worth doing if you're going for an off-road wheel and tyre. It's doable on T5.1, T6. At the time of this video, it's not doable on T6.1 yet, but that will come in very shortly, as soon as uh, VCDS is updated, I'm sure. So Mike is gonna pull this in now and get it lifted, and we'll do some after photos. Coney adjustable damper, what are we talking about? And you can see from the end there, you can adjust the dampening level. So Mikey will show you now. It's quite simple. You get one of these, in the box. plus and your negative on there. Just simply fits on top like that. You wanna stiffen it up, twist it round. You wanna get some more comfort, spin it the opposite way. It's also nice and easy. When you're in there, you can slide that straight through. You can reach in there and adjust. So just removing that panel. So on to the back end. Mikey will just explain what you do here. So when removing the spring, refitting the back ones, you remove the whole spring, obviously. The top rubber comes with it and you replace the ones you get with the kit, which those ones, so that'll go up there. And then the lower springs, you keep the factory spring rubber. Quite often they're wearing through on the inner edge. 
we do sell them, but these ones are all right. So if you fit in an adjustable kit, we're not doing that today. Obviously the adjuster goes at the top. Like that. Um, you also get this with it. Um, Andy showed you earlier on. It, you remove this rubber here, that inserts, and then the bump stop goes inside the, um, the new bit. This is just to stop your co uh, springs becoming coil bound and going over big bumps and stuff like that. Just a bump stop extender. Listen, yeah, just a bump stop extender. But there is instructions. So we see quite a lot of pictures on Facebook and people yeah. complaining about noises and creaks from the rear, but they leave this on and then they fit the spring rubber on top of that and that's where a lot of people go wrong, phase it down. Same for lower and upper lift suspension but remove that completely and uh, fit the new one that comes with the, with the suspension. We see is people talking about their rear dampers or noise or creaking coming from the rear and this is another common fault that people do, Mikey will explain. So as you can see on the Kona shock it's more exaggerated, the bush is off centre from the middle. When fitting this up you want to be fitting it so it's pushing the shock away so when it's bolting on it's, it's, it's that way so it's pushing the shock away you see it rubbing on here and on the, on the handbrake cable itself the B14s are alright but um, comfort dampers the green comfort dampers the black big H solos that we sell and um, so the Konas are all slightly off centre so just keep an eye on that so the same goes for lower suspension not just lift suspension basically just look out for this offset quite often people fit those the wrong way around. Right, so that's that vehicle all done, it's all lifted. So this has the uh, Coney damper with the 35mm IBAC lift springs, so I'll just take you for a quick look around. Looks really smart. So as we said before, we didn't put the adjustable version on this because there's not really a lot of weight in the back, just it's going to have some dog cages and dogs in the back, uh, but that sits really well. So 35mm lift springs, the IBAC ones, uh, and the Coney adjustable dampening kit. Now, this is the first vehicle we fitted this to, and I've got to say, this is the most comfy Swamper kit I've ever been in. Super impressed with it. Uh, it doesn't give you the mega lift that the Solos do. Solo dampers with the 45mm springs give you the highest lift, but this is super comfortable. Really impressed with it. Wheel-wise, so these are the KMC hole shots, which you'll see on 90% of Swampers. It seems to be the most popular wheel choice. A new wheel to look out for that we'll have in the next few weeks, and we'll have some more details on, is this, the new Fuel Zephyr wheel really liking this we've got it on one of our vehicles uh, you've got no corrosion issues with the sense caps or anything on these um, but i think that's going to be a really popular wheel it's coming in two colorways it's coming in this one in all black and there'll also be a bronze center and i think we might even do a limited edition one of red ones candy red ones will arrive second week in december probably so just in time for that christmas stocking from santa so these are fully so these are 17 inch by 8.5 they are uh, 5120 so direct fit and they're uh, t32 load rated a couple of other things worth mentioning. We also do a diff kit, diff lowering kit, diff spacer kit on our website that people, we've seen people that will buy um, suspension have just automatically bought that um, and we've had to ring them and just confirm they don't have a, they've, they've only got a, a full motion because you don't need it if you don't have full motion and Mikey will just explain what we mean by that. This is the kit, it consists of three spacers or packers, three longer bolts. These packers go in between your rear diff and the chassis itself. The space you diff down, so when raising it up, you're putting a lot of strain on your drive shafts. This just uh, spaces it down to eliminate that strain, uh, meaning your drive shaft runs at a straighter angle. It's better for the longevity of your drive shaft than your diff. So that's just four motions that need that, obviously. That's just four motions, Because yeah. you don't have that on the front. So the Cody dampers that we fit to this are the T30 version. So at the point that we've done this video, which is, where are we, November 2020, mid-lockdown, the Cody damper only comes in a T30 version not a T32 as yet, although we're told in January it'll be available. So the reason why is, outside the UK, most transporters are T30s, it's, there's hardly any T32s, whereas here in the UK we have loads of T32s, for tax reasons I think mostly, and a lot of, lot of T32 combis, so they just haven't developed the T32 strut yet, but it's coming. There's still plenty of other T32 options, like the, the build sign stuff, that's uh, great, but as it stands at the minute, no T32 option. So we get asked quite a lot, we send a lot of stuff internationally as well, and we get asked whether the vehicles, are, their vehicle would be on the T30 or the T32, and normally the, we have to get them, uh, people to send us photos of behind their wheel, where the hub attaches us to the suspension. So this hopefully might help you get an idea of whether your vehicle is sitting on a T30 front hub or a T32. Mikey will show you these two solo dampers. The difference is fairly easy here. The T32 is this one, T26-2830 is this one. The clamping method is different. So on the T32, it's like a normal generic two bolt method onto the hub. You'll notice when you're looking under your arch that the two bolts are on the front side uh, towards the wheel. And then it's uh, a pinch bolt type hub sleeve 
um, on the T30, which the bolts would be on the back, so they bolt through that, and the other one's in the hub. So that is the two differences between those two aesthetically. Um, and I'll lock over this now and we'll show you from behind what it looks like. As we said, T30, the bolts are on the back and the strut slides into the hub itself rather than bolting onto the hub. So the bolts are on the back side rather than the front side. That's T30. So if yours looks like that, you've got a T26, T28 or T30. And if yours bolts on like this, then you've got a T32. So hopefully that's answered all the questions you have about swampers or lifting vehicles. Any other questions, please feel free to post them below and we'll answer them when we can or drop us an email. But hopefully this video's uh, helped answer a lot of questions that you might have already had about lifting vehicles. As always, if you could like the video, share it with your friends, anybody you think that might be interested in swampering, the weather's getting bad, we always see a massive increase in sw uh, off swamper suspension, lift suspension over this uh, kind of period of the year. Uh, but yeah, like the video, Share with your friends, click the subscribe button and click the little bell to get notifications when we release a new video. Uh, flatbed's coming along really well, so that'll be the next video, actually. Um, paint's been done, probably going to show you the colour and a few other bits, but stay tuned. Thanks for watching.